Rises from indentistry. Strong is arm and keen is sentence. He's a pirate now indeed. Here's good luck to Frederick's ventures. Frederick's out of his indentures. Two and twenty now he's rising, and alone he's fit to fly. Which were bent on signalizing with the news were ever right. Here's good luck to Frederick's ventures. Frederick's out of his indentures. For a for the pirate ship, fill a fill the pirate box. And to make us more than merry, let the pirate come to pass. Happy birthday, Frederick. <laughs> yes, Frederick, <coughs> from today you rank as a full blown member of our band. That kind of band. <laughs> Make up your mind. <laughs> Our band of pirates. Hey! My friend, I thank you all for your kindly wishes. Would that I could repay them as they deserve. What do you mean? Today I am out of my indentures, and today I leave you forever. <laughs> what? Quite a combo. Quick there. <laughs> Keen a hand, scuttling a cunara, or boarding a Disney cruise liner, never to get the hand quite. Yes! I have done my best for you! <laughs> <laughs> and why? It was my duty under my indentures, and I am the slave of duty. As a child, I was regularly apprenticed to your band. It was through an error. Huh? Oh, no matter, the mistake was ours, not yours. And I was an honor bound by it. Well, an what air? I mean, I tell you, it would reflect upon my well-loved group. Nay, dear master, my mind has long been gnawed by the cankering truth of mystery. Better have it out at once. <laughs> <laughs>
when I have long pardoned you. The two words were so much at last. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> far, though years have rolled over their heads, but this afternoon, my obligation ceases. Individually, I love you all with an affection unspeakable. But collectively, I look upon you with a disgust that amounts to absolute detestation. Oh, Pretty me, my beloved friends, for such is my sense of duty that once out of my bounds, I shall feel myself bound to devote myself heart and soul to your extermination. Oh, 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 if you conscientiously feel that it is your duty to destroy us, we cannot blame you for acting on that conviction. Always act in accordance with the dictates of your conscience, my boy, and chop the consequences. <laughs> I, besides, we can offer you but a little temptation to remain with us. Uh, we don't seem to make piracy pay. <laughs> oh, I'm sure I don't know why, but... Uh, we don't. <laughs> I know why, but I must tell you it wouldn't be right. Why not? It's only 9.15. Oh, it's 11.30. Right, it's 11.30. But you're one of us until the sun strikes 12. Oh, true, and until then you are bound to protect. Our interests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then, it is my duty as a pirate to tell you that you are too tender hearted. Oh. For instance, you make a point of never attacking a party weaker than yourselves, and when you attack a stronger party, you invariably get thrashed. Oh, oh, that's not true. That's not true. There is some truth in that. Oh. Then again, you make a point of never molesting an orphan. Oh. Why? Cause. We are orphans ourselves, and know what it is. <laughs> yes, and it has gone about it. What is the consequence? Everyone we capture says, he is an orphan. <laughs> Why, the last three ships we took proved to be entirely manned by orphans, and so we had to let them go. <laughs> One would think Great Britain's mercantile navy was recruited solely from her orphan asylums, <laughs> which we know is not the case. Oh, it, all that. You wouldn't have us absolutely, uh, merciless, would you? I have my difficulty. And tell 12 o'clock I would. After 12, I wouldn't. Oh. Oh. Was ever a man placed in so delicate a situation? And Ruth, your own Ruth, whom you love so well, and who has won her middle-aged way into your boyish heart, what will become of her? Oh, he will take you with him. <laughs> Well, Ruth, I feel some little difficulty about you. It is true that I admire you very much, but I have been constantly at sea since I was eight years old, and yours is the only woman's face I have seen during that time. <laughs> I, I, I think it is a sweet face. It is! How oh, it is! I say I think it is. That is my impression. <laughs> but as I have never had the opportunity of comparing you with other women, it is just... Possible that I may be mistaken? That's, <laughs> what? That's true. That's true! <laughs> what a terrible thing it would be if I were to marry this innocent person oh. and then find out that she was on the whole plane. Oh, <laughs> oh Ruth is very, well, very, very well. Uh, very well, indeed. <laughs> Remains of a fine woman of her room. <laughs> do you really think so? Oh, uh, I do. Uh, you do? <laughs>
Frederick, no, th this must not be. Oh, we are rough men. Rough. We lead a rough life. Rough. Rough. But we are not so utterly heartless as to deprive thee of thy love. I think I am right in saying that there is not one here who would rob thee of this. This inestimable treasure for all the world holds dear. Not one! No, I thought there wasn't. <laughs> Keep thy love, Frederick. Keep thy love. <laughs> You're very good, I'm sure. <laughs> well, it's the top of the tide, and we must be off. All hands to the ship. Fill that water cask. Scrape the barnacles off the binnacle. Put that thingy on the dinghy. Farewell, Frederick. When your process of extermination begins, let our deaths be as swift and painless as you can conveniently make them. I will. By the love I have for you, I swear it. Would that you could render this extermination unnecessary by accompanying me back to civilization. Oh. No, Frederick, it, it cannot be. I don't think much of our profession, but contrasted with respectability, it is competitively honest. <laughs> no, Frederick, I shall live and die a pious king. <laughs> That play a sanctimonious part with a pirate head and a pirate heart. Away to the cheating world go you, where pirates all are well to do. Ah. But I'll be true to the song I sing and live and die a pirate. I am a pirate king. You are the pirate king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. It is a pirate king. Must manage somehow to get through. <laughs> More dirty work than ever I do. For I am a pirate king. Hey! It, is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. I am a pirate king. You are, you are. You are very dear to me, as you know. 
I must be circumspect. You see, you are considerably older than I. A lad of 21 usually looks for a wife of 17. A wife of 17? You will find me a wife of a thousand. <laughs> no, but I will find you a wife of 47, and that is quite enough. Uh, Ruth, tell me candidly and without reserve, compared with other women, how are you? I shall answer you truthfully, master. I am a slight cold, but otherwise I am quite well. <laughs> I am sorry for your cold, but I was referring rather to your personal appearance. Compared with other women, um, are you beautiful? I have been told so, master. Ah, <laughs> uh, but lately? Oh, no, years and years ago. And what do you think of yourself? Well, it's a, it's a delicate question to answer, but I think I am a fine woman. That is your candid opinion? Oh, yes, I should be deceiving you if I told you otherwise. Thank you, Ruth. For I'm sure you will not deceive me. And Ruth, thank you for not, for not deceiving me. Ruth? Yes, Master? <laughs> Thank you for not deceiving me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ruth. I'm sure you would not deceive me. For you would not take it advantage of me. And... What I say is true, Master. Do I hear a sound? Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> Hark! Surely I hear voices. But who has ventured to approach our all but inaccessible air? Can it be the Coast Guard? No, it doesn't sound like the Coast Guard. Oh no. It's young maidens, the voices of young maidens. He should hear them and see them. I am lost. How marvelous. How simply marvelous. How lovely, how surpassingly lovely is the plainest of them. What grace, what delicacy, what refinement. And Ruth, Ruth told me she was beautiful. A false one, you have deceived me. I have deceived you. Yes, deceived me. You told me you were fair as gold. And the master, am I not so? And now I see you're plain and old. I'm sure I'm not a job so. Upon my innocence you play. I'm not the one to love so. Your face is like your hair is gray. It's gradually gone so. Faith was woman to deceive me, I could trust it so. Master, master, do not leave me here, near you go. Faith was woman, master, master, faith was woman, master, master, faith was woman to deceive me, I will trust.
Before these gentle maidens, I dare not show myself in this alarming costume. No, no, I must appear in decent clothing. Until I can appear in decent clothing.
feel entirely alone. Why, oh, how dare you be the first of a being to ever set foot in this enchanting forest? <gasps> Except for mermaids! It's the very place for mermaids who are all human beings down to waste. And who can't be said strictly to set foot anywhere. <gasps> Tails they do! I had intended not to intrude myself upon your notice in this affected but alarming costume. But under these peculiar circumstances, it is my bounden duty to inform you that your proceedings will not be unwitnessed. But who are you, sir, speak? I am a pirate! <gasps> Ladies, do not shoo and shun me. <laughs> this evening I renounce my vile profession, and to that end of pure and peerless maidens, of blushing buds of ever-blooming beauty, I soar at heart, I soar at heart, Implore your kind assistance. How pitiful this tale! How rare is beauty! How pitiful this tale! How rare is beauty! Does not feel the moral beauty of making worldly interest subordinate to sense of duty. Who would not give up willingly a matrimonial ambition to rescue such a So
Senses, men who stick at no offenses will no long be here. Piracy, no drop of trade is. Pray you get your hands, young ladies, while the coast is clear. No, we must not lose our senses. If they stick at no offenses, we should not. Yes, 
Yes, I am a major general. Serene's a major general. Yes, I am a major general. Yes, it is a glorious thing to be a major general. It is a lovely major general, a lovely major general. I know the king to take it, and I might want to fight his daughter. For a matter of fact, you want to know I'm more than Whoa. I am very well acquainted, too, with matters mathematical. I understand the equations both the simple and quadratical. About my young little theater, I am teeming with a lot of those. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Oh, oh. With many simple facts about the square of the hypothesis. With many simple facts about the square of the hypothesis. With many simple facts about the square of the hypothesis. Calculus. I know the scientific case that he is anonymous. In short, a man is sensible, animal and mineral. I am the very model of a modern major general. In short, a man is sensible, animal and mineral. He is the very model of a modern major general. I know I'm in the history reading office since a catalog. I am sure how to cross the center of pretty taste of the matter. I quote him to the giants of the French and either gathering. Think of myself as both curialities for that. I can tell him that in Raphael's from General Dowson's office. I know the crooked callers from the France and Ellis office, but I can never refute them with that person in this dinner. Dinner for, dinner for, dinner for. Ruddy Gall? No, no, it hasn't been written yet. <laughs> Dumbledore! Yeah. Still on the copyright. Oh, oh, oh. oh I have it! And the whistle of the years is better than Vernon Lance's And whistle of the years is better than Vernon Lance's And whistle of the years is better than Vernon Lance's And whistle of the years is better than Vernon Lance's And whistle of the years is better than Vernon Lance's And whistle of the years is better than Vernon Lance's And whistle of the years is better than Vernon Lance's And whistle of the years is better than Vernon Lance's And whistle of the years is better than Vernon Lance's And whistle of the years is better than Vernon Lance's And whistle of the years is better than Vernon Lance's And whistle of the years is better than Vernon Lance's And whistle of the years is better than Vernon Lance's And whistle of the years is better than Vernon Lance's And whistle of the years is better than Vernon Lance's And whistle of the years is better than Vernon Lance's And whistle of In fact, when I know what is meant by Mamelon and Ravelin, when I can tell at sight a mouse a rifle from a javelin, when such affairs as sorties and surprises I'm more wary at, and when I know precisely what is meant by commissariat. Oh, oh, oh. oh it's in the glossary. Oh. <laughs> When I can tell that progress has been made in modern gunnery. When I know more of tactics than a novice in a nunnery. Oh. <laughs> in short, when I have a smattering of elemental strategy. Oh, yes! You say a better major general is than a savage. You say a better major general is than a savage. Century. It's only been done after the beginning of the century. But still, a man is vegetable, animal, and mineral. I am the very model of a modern major general. But still, a man is vegetable, animal, and mineral. He is the very model of a modern I 
conscience will say something that will relieve my father's sorrow? Pardon? Can you cheer him up? Oh, I will try, dear Mabel, but why does he sit night after night in his drafty old ruin? Why do I sit here? Why do I sit here to escape the pilot's clutches? I described myself as an orphan, and heaven help me, I am no orphan. I, I shudder to think at the abominable falsehood by which I escape those pirates. And, and I come here to, to humble myself before the tombs of my ancestors and to implore their forgiveness for having brought dishonor on the family of such. But you forget, sir, you bought the property only a year ago, and the stucco on your baronial castle is scarcely dry. Frederick, in this chapel there are ancestors. You cannot deny that. Now, with the castle, I purchased the chapel and its contents. I don't know whose ancestors they were, but I do know whose ancestors they are. And I shudder to think that their descendants, if I purchased this, I may so describe myself, should have put this honor upon what I am sure was an otherwise unstained discussion. Be comforted. Had you not acted as you did, these reckless men would assuredly have called in that passing clergyman and have married your large family on the spot. Ah, uh, Frederick, I thank you for your profit solace, but it is unavailing. Such is the anguish and remorse I feel at the abominable falsehood by which I escaped those simple-minded pirates that I would go at once to their simple-minded commander this very night and confess all. Did I not fear that the consequences to me would March against these scoundrels. Heaven let me. And by midnight, I hope to have atoned for my involuntary association with these pestilent scourges by sweeping them from the face of the earth. And then, dear Mabel, and you will be mine. And are your fearless warriors close at hand? They are. They only wait my orders. Then, Frederick, let your escort lie in hearted. Be summoned to receive a general's blessing. Ere they depart upon their dread adventure. Dear sir, they come.
And a sense of duty, stern dictation. I, circumstances victim, <coughs> have been guilty. <coughs> Young Frederick, who calls your late commander. And I, your little brute. Oh, mad intruders. How dare he face me? No, you not on false one that I have doomed you to extermination. Have mercy on us. He'll say you slaughter. I do not think I ought to listen to you. Yet mercy shall alloy my stern resentment. And so I will be merciful. Say on. <laughs> <laughs> 
you. <laughs> Don't put it on that footing. As I was merciful to you just now, be merciful to me. I implore you not to insist on the letter of your bond. Just as the cup of happiness is at my lips. We insist on nothing. We content ourselves with pointing out to you your duty. Your duty? You have appealed to my sense of duty, and my duty is only too clear. I abhor your infamous calling. I shudder at the thought of ever having been mixed up in it. But duty is before all. At any price, I will do my duty. Bravely spoken! Come, you're one of us once more! You understand? I think I do. We think I'm unshaken. This step shall be taken. But need be blunt. I think so too. I'll bend the bed. You'll never regret it. But you do, you do, you must be done. The rule of my serenity. Yes. Yeah. 
1940, I of age shall be. Of them returning claim you, I declare this. It seems so long. Swear, then tell them you'll be true to me. Pass 
Disturbing my peace. <laughs> Maestro, when the cost is finished jumping on his mother, he loves to lie a basking in the sun. I'll take one consideration with another. With another. A policeman's lot is not an happy one. Oh, when constabulary.
Sing with the unparalleled felicity of what we have been longing for, unbounded domesticity. And this will be accomplished by a doctor of divinity who happily resides in the immediate vicinity. 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 Come on, dear lieutenant, now the story I've got here that eventually has only been one after the beginning of the century. But still, in marrying off my daughters, a tall man of ten and all, I show my inner models of a modern man. Yeah. Hey.